What's up, y'all? This is your girl, H. Dizzle. And I'm Brian Patrick Davis. And I'm your girl, H. Star. And we are your host of The, the Crew Love, Love Show. Show. So today we have someone very, 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 very special. He very. has a radio voice, too, you guys. Yes. That's what they say. It. So you've done everything. I, you know, yes, I, I've, I've dibbled and dabbled trying to find my way in the industry. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I had to try different things. I didn't know what I was wanting to do. I didn't come into the industry with a clear-cut vision of, I want to be this. You know, so I had to try different things in order to uh, to kind of find myself. And I'm still searching. Yeah. So, like, what, what were some of those things that you did when you were well, when first I first coming? When I first got started, I started as a roadie, which is, you know, moving equipment for bands. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, um, I started learning about sound, started working the, the soundboard for bands, uh, started working the lights. Um, and then I moved up to booking bands and then managing bands. Uh, uh, I dibbled and dabbled in video production. I was a PA, production assistant on you know music videos mm-hmm. um and then I, I my true calling came in uh i i feel when uh speech and headliner from arrest, arrested development uh asked me to represent them mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and and that's when i started you know really doing the management thing and trying to figure that that space out mm-hmm. but you know I'm originally from Mount Vernon, New York. I had no um, th- no mentors. I had nobody to teach me anything mm-hmm. about this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I had to learn through trial and error. I think it's so interesting that you say that, Ian, because, like, you have been that for so many people that have, like, just come through, like, Come, come in your path. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's so interesting to hear you say that you didn't have a mentor and you kind of have, like, become that figure for so many people. Like, um, you know, like, me specifically, I, like, it has always been, like, it, it is difficult to navigate when you don't have any, like, clear direction. Mm-hmm. And there are so many paths that you can go down when you're, you know, trying to figure it out in the industry. And so it's just, it, it, I think it's really important that you said, like, you know, I didn't have that guidance, but you've become that guidance for other people. Well, you know, I, I, my thing was to prevent people from making the same mistakes as, as I did. That's why, you know, whenever you guys came, you know, we had these meetings at Icon Studios. I was like, you know, let me, let me watch over y'all. You know what I'm saying? And let, let me be that uncle to you guys and, and make sure that, you know, you, you guys do it right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, and I, I I I saw the hunger, and that's what inspires me. You know, when I see the real passion in what it is that you guys do, um, I was like, okay, cool. You know, and, and you know, having you guys being the mentor for you guys was great. It was great. It, and it's, it's actually, it's healing to me. You know what I'm saying? Because when I have these days when I don't want to get up, I don't, I, I'm like, why am I here? This business has been so mistreative of me mm. and people have the loyalty and I'm sitting there and I'm kicking my covers and, you know, flipping on, you know, the TV and not wanting to move, you know, and then I get a call from Brian or Devin or Rob saying, hey, we got this thing. We need, we need your guidance here. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, this is the reason why I do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, it's for these folks, yeah. you know, and, and hopefully they'll, they'll do what they need to do and exceed my expectations and blow up bigger than me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's the joy that I get from, you know, working with people behind the scenes mm-hmm. and working with artists. Yeah, mm-hmm. Definitely like paying it forward. I think with us here, like the crew love show, it actually is about the behind the scenes. It is about like those people that are so, uh, valuable that play their role. They play mm-hmm. their position. And, like, we're here to spotlight that. Like, we're here to give those people a voice, those people to speak on, like, you know, things that they've been through are, like, challenges or just the differences that they've made throughout the industry, throughout their lives, and then how they've impacted others. And with us, we're seeing, like, real in real time and real, like, real day mm-hmm. lives that, that we play such a huge, valuable role and we're just 
the crew. Like right. we're literally right. behind the scenes, and, and I like hearing like people like pillars, like you, and I, I like ledges. We think like, dad, like we like we're living in our our early times, but it's like almost like we doing what we're supposed to do. You know right. what I'm saying? Like we're, we get to see others that have been doing it so long that it gives us like confirmation that everything that we're doing, all the hard work, everything that we're putting in is making sense. Even if we aren't the stars or we're not on the front covers, we know from the front to the back, to the inside, to the out, to the direction, to the creative, to the design, it was us. <laughs> yeah. and, and you know, you could sit back and, and say that I was part of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's your legacy. At the end of the day, when it's all said and done and, and it's time for you to go home, mm -hmm. you know that you have left an indelible mark mm. in this in this industry. And that's what keeps me going. Mm. It's not about the money. And Lord knows I need it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I haven't <laughs> yeah, achieved my <laughs> financial <laughs> success yet. Yes. Right. But, you know, I'm still successful. Yeah. You yeah. know, I feel successful, you know, because... How many people can sit here and say that they created from scratch the biggest selling female group of all time? No one. Absolutely no, no one. one. You know, I mean, and, and I can say the group didn't come to me. They weren't put together. They, they didn't, you know, I didn't put Escape together. Mm -hmm. You know, when I took them to Jermaine Dupree, they were already a unit. It was their voices that impressed me. But at TLC, mm -hmm. or as I called them, Second Nature, I put that group together from you sure scratch. Did. Absolutely. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Mm -hmm. And it was uh, based on the, the simple concept of Bell Biv DeVoe. You know what I'm saying? Rico Wade came in, introduced me to Lisa Lefty Lopez and Tianti Baz Watkins. I was already working with a young lady named Crystal Jones, mm -hmm. and we put the three ladies together. Later, uh, when Pebbles brought the concept out for me, uh, she replaced Crystal Jones with, with Rosanda Thomas, who... Uh, was nicknamed Chili so they can keep the TLC moniker. But mm -hmm. um, that was me. That was what I wanted to see. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So watching that gives me fulfillment. And the people that were in the room know, you know. So when Jermaine Dupree says, yeah, well, you know, yes, Pebbles got them their deal mm -hmm. and got them out there, but it was Ian's idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ian was the one who put the concept together or, or Rico Wade says that in his stories. So what does that look like? Like where you tell us the story of how the idea popped up in your head <laughs> and then how we got to the actual TLC. Well, you know, when I was uh, uh, going to school, I was going to the Art Institute. They had a commercial music uh, business program that I was attending, actually right up the road from here, mm -hmm. from, this, from this building. And um, we had we watched, uh, in one of my classes, we watched... Uh, a movie called uh, The Idol Maker. It's based upon, it's a, loosely based on a true story of this gentleman who created, you know, two stars, two back in the 50s, mm. 60 era. And what he used to do was he would go by the, the magazine stands on the street and would thumb through the magazines and, and see what people were reading about. Mm. You know, I adopted that process. I would go into Kroger or CVS or whatever stores I were popping. I'd go through all the fan magazines, Word Up, mm -hmm. Right On, mm -hmm. Tiger Beat, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, uh, Fresh. Mm -hmm. And I would see, you know. Y'all oh, too young for that. Too young for that. We don't have Jeez. No, I'm trying. Oh, like, um, yeah. So, 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 oh, God, I feel so old. Um, and, and the people on the cover at that particular time were always New Edition because they, they were our heroes. They were the thing, then. yeah. Exactly. And then because of New Edition, the, the breakout groups, mm -hmm. uh, whether it was Ralph, whether it was Johnny, mm -hmm. whether it was Bobby or Belle Biv DeVoe. I loved what Bill Biv DeVoe was doing. I loved how they incorporate hip hop with R and B. Mm -hmm. I loved the swag, and I was like, "Yo, what would be so dope is if we had a female version of Bell Biv DeVoe." And wow. I said it in my mind, and said, "I'm gonna put it together." And I already had Crystal Jones, like I was already working with her and trying to build the concept for her, and it clicked in my mind. It's like, "Yo, this is what we're gonna do." I just need to find the other two components. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay, so I. 
So I have a question, Ian, because, um, and, and I feel like we've had this conversation before, but I know um, you come from the school of like artists actually going through artist development mm -hmm. and having artist boot camps mm -hmm. and like really like getting mm -hmm. these artists into tip top shape sometimes years before they ever see the light of day, mm -hmm. you know, and um, the music business has really gotten away from that. And they, you know, they go on social media and find these like, you know, regional talents with like moderate hits already and they don't spend the time on developing these artists they bank on you know okay they have a cute social media following and they've got one song so let's sign them or let's mm -hmm. see what they can do what how do you feel about kind of like the way and I think I think the tide is turning a little bit mm -hmm. I, I see the trend and like people wanting to like um invest in longevity just a little bit more yeah. but like talk about that like how do you feel about the state of of My, the lack of artist. artist development and <laughs> I mean, I, I look at today's... Oh, yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I call them. This yeah. is the microwave generation. Mm -hmm. You know, you throw it in there, a couple of hits, boom, and they're out. Mm -hmm. Y'all, can y'all name me anybody in today's world that has the staying power of a Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, a Prince, an Elton John, you know what I'm saying? People that, can, that will be able to tour and fill stadiums when they're 60, 70, 80 years old. Not I can only think of two. Me too. Yeah. And and off and, the top of my head. And, and who would that be? Beyonce and, and Jay Z. And, okay. Janet and, and Janet. And that's, yeah. That's my. You know. Well, that's what is that? That's well, that's still. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. They come from. They're, right. they're they're they are they products of the eighties and nineties. Exactly. Right. It's not. It it it's like. I it's so crazy. Like I watch award shows and I. And I literally say every time I watch them, I'm like, wow, there are no stars. No, yeah. they're, they're not. Now, I, I think I could think of two that are sort of kind of recent, but, you know, uh, uh, that they came along a little later. Uh, for me, it's Pink and Bruno Mars. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But also, but to be fair, Pink is a is a product yeah, of yeah. she's a product of that LaFace, LaFace machine yes, yeah, you yeah. know so it's like even even yeah. with those people it's like mm, yeah but they also came from that pink put in the the man hours before she just was pink right. you know she and um I don't know much about Bruno Mars's story but you know I think Elvis impersonator. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but he, but he was being trained by his family yeah. mm -hmm. when he was a small boy. And also palatable for white faces. Right. Too, yeah. So, yeah. But I mean, that. Well, we, only thing, <laughs> artistry wise, let me get there. Artistry wise, it's rough. It, it, it's just rough. Like, entertainer, we get it. Some of y'all are entertainers, but like, artistry and like really putting on a show, like, Usher might be the last of a dying breed. Yeah. And it sucks because it's like, who's left? Like, they can't, they won't be able to go to concerts. Like, I, I <laughs> you know, I, I watched this thing on Hulu. Rap Caviar has this little mm -hmm. series of shows. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot about, uh, what's, what's my boy's name? Uh, oh, my goodness. The, 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 the crazy crew from, uh, the odd, odd future, odd future. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tyler, well, the creator. Tyler, the creator. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now, those kind of artists I can respect because they're cre they're always thinking of ways to reinvent themselves. But also, in the reason why you fuck with that too is because they're a group, they're a collective, a collective. of artists. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that makes them unique. Like it is, it is the fact that like it's a bunch of them cultivating a a culture that is all their own. Where you know, I might n not even fuck with the music like that, but they are, they're they're creating for the sake of like creation, right? You know, absolutely. A and so I, 
Continue with no. Yeah. I mean that that that's the thing. Like I I I have a newfound respect for his journey, mm-hmm. and I didn't know that Frank Ocean was part of his clique, mm-hmm. was part of that whole. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So I, I watched that. That's the thing that I like to do. I like to watch these little documentaries on these people, and and you know, I I, I start having more respect for him. It's like you know, you you can't really judge unless you know the journey, right? Like I watched the little baby. Uh, documentary too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, all of these these new the Coy Ray is part of the rap caviar. Mm-hmm. Thing. She's part of that whole situation. Um, I I I didn't know how many records and stuff like that she was selling. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought that she was going to be a quick little, mm-hmm. but she's proven to be. She's proven to have the staying power now, and she's going to be around in the next 10 years. Are we going to be talking still about a question. We don't know. It's years. still a question. Are we going to want to go and see her concert? You know what I'm saying? And and that's the thing. Like, you know, nobody is striving for that longevity in this business anymore. And I'll tell you why. Uh, one of the reasons. They're making money without it. Yeah. Very much true. They're making more money than these artists back in those days could ever imagine. And they're making it quick. You, you know, know what I'm saying? <laughs> so Tyler, Tyler, Tyler's whole thing was like, uh, you know, I'm I'm searching for validation. It's not about the money. I'm, I'm having, you know, this crisis and I'm driving a McLaren, mm-hmm. you know, bought and paid for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he wasn't getting the validation that he wanted. Mm-hmm. You know, but they're making money. Mm-hmm. You know, when these Hold people on. are going out by the tons and watching them perform. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Buying the merchandise, streaming the records. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't know. It's kind of to, to that's a long way around the question. Yeah, but it's a, but it is a double edged sword because yeah. it's like people are out here eating, right? They and um and I think that accessibility that people have to be able to create their own music and their own content you Mm -hmm. know like like you know i'm used to like going to the studio to record a song Mm -hmm. that that is what i that is what i grew up knowing that's what i like to do but now niggas be doing it at their house yeah i saw a guy on, on twitter literally yesterday he's staying in his car until he makes it and he's recording out of his car, like it's like, and it probably sounds thing. good it's as fuck. I was like, what? And that that's what that's what's so crazy to me. It's like the 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 rate at which people are producing content is so interesting mm-hmm. to me because it's like it's like it, it's like a mind fuck for me almost. But see, now that's the double edged sword because it's easier that they have the tools to do it, but now you have this crappy music that's out there that kids mm-hmm. think is so hot. And um, you know you can't distinguish between the two, and then but but I have to sit back too and be like, okay, now I'm being a parent. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like my parents were when I was trying to listen to Prince. <laughs> you know what, what I'm saying? What are you listening to? What is you that know? stuff you listening? It was like, yeah, exactly. Why is this man naked on the back <laughs> right? of his horse? Yeah, I'm like, hmm. But the music. But the music. Yeah. <laughs> but he's singing about sex. Right. Yeah. Like, well, you know that's. But it's yeah. That's just, you know yeah. So. I have to 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 think. Okay, uh, 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 you know, uh, is it beyond me? Mm-hmm. You know, because I, I tell you, I'll give you a, one, a story that's close to home that that you know about. I was representing this artist named Shang, and <laughs> Shang Shang. The name came from. I worked extensively with these guys, uh, with Shang. They even gave her the name Shang. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I, I I had the artists and I put the artists in their hands and let them do what they do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they did a wonderful job on the debut project. Nobody got it. But I bet you if it dropped today, people it, would people be flocking yeah. to it. Yeah. Matter of fact, we might need to experiment with that. <laughs> but I, I'll tell you this. On the second project, I got it with a, a producer named K-Class, and we did this record, right, called Faded. With 21? Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she wanted this rapper on there. Well, we all know who the rapper is now. Mm-hmm. But she wanted this rapper on here. And I thought, you know, and I'm just going to be honest here. I didn't like the rapper. I, she was playing the music. I was like, oh, are you serious? Like, you mm-hmm. want this person on, on your record? And this was before he was like a thing. Yeah, yeah I, I was exactly. I did. I didn't like him before either. Yeah. And, and, and I was per- personally friends with the management. And I didn't. I didn't like it. I didn't like the messaging. And I just said it wasn't going to work. And as a DJ, 
I said it wasn't going to work. And I, <laughs> I put my name on it. I put it out there. I was like, it's not going to work. It's going to pass. <laughs> it's not going to go industry. But see, that's when you have to do, as a manager, I had you, to go to social media. I, I had to pay attention Watch. to what was going on. Yeah. I had to see who was validating the man. He's in pictures with Drake. He's in pictures with T.I. And But the thing that got me was his performances on all white campuses with the people with the, knowing yeah, the lyrics from the record. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we'll get him on that. Mm-hmm. This is right before, right before he, he like, yeah, the of uh, the freshman class uh-huh. on yeah. Double XL, and you know, I was able to get him for a really good price. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I remember that. But but the, the thing of it is that is that I, I if I hadn't done the research, yeah, right, I wouldn't. I'd be like, nah, no. man, I'm being, you yeah. know, we're but, not doing that. But Ian, I think that that's the reason why you've been able to stay so current is because like a lot of times that's the piece that we miss right like we don't we don't look for and and i'm even guilty of it like i'll be writing people off so quickly i'll be like oh that shit is trash right and 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 it's because like i'm used to um the the reason that music and entertainers singers rappers artists move me is because of the feeling that i get Mm -hmm. and if i and if i don't get the feeling i'm automatically gonna be like but that doesn't mean that it's not resonating somewhere right. else. Right. And so the fact that you like that that you are so tapped in to what's going on cuz you manage producers now. You know what I'm saying? Like and and that's and that kind of like brings me to my next question like how do you like teeter on the line of like still you know like still trying to keep the integrity of like of of the music and also like kind of like not chasing the trend but no being, you know, actually what what makes a good manager like ultimately how do you okay so uh, i'm gonna try to, to, to flip both questions uh-huh. like for me a lot of people have the wrong conception about management mm-hmm. right people have to understand like when you bring on a manager you're bringing it on to to manage your business and so I, I always, I, I liken it to a McDonald's franchise. You own a McDonald's franchise, right? Mm-hmm. So you bring on a manager to do what? To to hire the people, to hire the guy that washes the floor, mm-hmm. to, to to cook the food, to run the drive through windows, mm-hmm. um, to watch the, the counter. You know, this person is in charge of all of that to handle your day-to-day to make sure that your business is successful. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And if you hire a really creative manager, not only are they watching everything that's going on, but they're coming up with ideas mm. and, and concepts. You know, you know what? Let's try this special. Why don't we try this special and see if, if, if it works? Let's do this with the menu and see if it works. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the sign of a good manager. A lot of people, these artists, they feel like the manager is your ATM, your personal ATM. <laughs> they think that the manager is your, your <laughs> hotel, your Airbnb. Thanks. You understand what I'm saying? They feel like they're your personal restaurant. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times those people are the ones that are not ready to have a manager. No, they're, they're really not. Because you're not supposed to have a manager until there's something to manage. Yep. Right. Until there's income coming in. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And that's why I kind of switched over. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll be a consultant mm. first. All right? You want me to work with you? I will consult you. You pay me. I will consult you. And then if if I see where money is starting to come in and things, we'll, we can switch it to a manager position. Mm. Okay. I didn't know that you wait until you start making money to get a manager. You I thought should. That you, you should. Well, right. But I thought that it was always cost. like the other way around. But like, you know, but you know, why, but you know why you should wait is because you whatever you're making, right. that percentage should go to and, your manager. Right, right. And gotcha. I think that what, I think th- what's really important about what Ian is saying is like a manager should pay for itself. Right. The income that you come in, that, that you have mm-hmm. coming in. And like you said, a creative manager will find ways to get make in. sure that you are getting the income so that they can get paid because they should get 12 to 15% or whatever 
they're booking you for whatever you're getting books for. But I think what the reason why we have this idea of what managers and management is, is because a lot of people get it for the optics. Yeah. They get it because they're like, Oh, I need, I, I've, I've got this amount of so- followers on social media. I need a manager. Cause I don't need to be talking to you bitches. Mm-hmm. I need somebody. I need, you need to be talking to somebody else. Cause I'm too, you know, it's, yeah, it's about yeah. the look right. of having a manager. And see, and that's when people fall short. You know, managers should be knocking on your door. You shouldn't be going out there looking for management. You understand what I'm saying? So you know if people are coming to you for management, then you're doing something right. You understand what I'm saying? So at at that point, it's like, okay. And then the most important thing, you do your research on your people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people go for the the glitz and the glamour with somebody who, uh, you know, may drive a nice car. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, may live in a nice house or whatever, but really don't know anything about real management. You know what I'm saying? And and they're just sitting around collect, waiting to collect a check mm-hmm. or track you know record or face card. Exactly. Trash. Like you know what? What is it that you? Who have you represented? Yeah. You know what I'm and saying? Re- and, 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 and that's so funny that you say that because like who have you really represented? Because a lot of these people are like. Um, vanity managers mm-hmm. they're just yeah. managers they're just management on paper right and then they have other people that are doing really that. doing their job picking up the day-to-day kind of like slack of what you already know <laughs> yeah. Yeah. or already or know. just a and r's and i think that is the tricky thing at this day and age like people don't know the difference and see and that's the thing like i know my lane like going back to shane I put that I put her with them and let them do what they do. And I did. Did I ever get in your way? Nah. Did I ever argue about what y'all were doing? Y'all were doing some pretty weird stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it worked. You know, so I know my lane. I'm not a producer. I'm yeah. not a songwriter. I hate the studio. So just bring it to me when it's done. Yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? I don't want to go in there and try to produce some record. Oh, yeah, you should do this. You should, nah, man. But also, Ian, to be clear, you were an A&R. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I've done that before. Yeah. A uh, year. So you, know how to, you do know how to put it together yeah. and make sure that you know how to connect the dots. And that's that's what I'm good at. Yeah. I'm a dot connector. Dot. I'm okay. able to put this person with that person and this person with that and create a collective to make the for the greater good. Mm-hmm. So disagreements, right? If, if if it's a situation, have you ever been in a situation where you've connected people and it didn't like work? Too? Oh, absolutely. What, so how do you resolve that? <laughs> like, what what's your resolution to stuff like that? Because we work with a lot of people. We, we all break. We, we break it all. It's over. <laughs> it's over. It's over. It's but you know, not everything. Everything can't just you know because we work with people now. I'm a videographer. Mm-hmm. Ryan does graphics. He does music. Ace does everything. She's low key like a little mini you. <laughs> For real. <laughs> and we work with people, or we work with people's people that are like, okay, girl, leave me alone. I don't want to talk to you. you you're, you're not. You're not a great. I, like we don't mesh well. Mm-hmm. So how do you, how do you handle yourself in situations like that? Oh, uh, yeah. I I kind of back away. Mm-hmm. I back away from situations like that. I don't like confrontation. You know what I'm saying? I am so non-confrontational. I'd rather walk away from a situation than have to deal with the nonsense. It's like, if you don't want to be with me anymore, yo, go your way. You right. go your way. I get my, As long as I get compensated for the work that I put into the situation, then we cool. But I don't like to force people to work with me. Uh, uh, and I don't like, you know, uh, them having to feel that they're stuck with me. You know what I'm saying? That's another reason why, like, I like to date before I get married. A management contract to me is a, like a, a wedding license. A marriage yeah, license. Yeah. For real. You know what I'm These big rings. So I, gotta, real. I gotta, I gotta, you know, I gotta give this person like a good three months and say, okay, are we compatible? You know what I'm saying? Or, or are you going to go at the first sign of any kind of situation and try to go where the grass is greener, where you think the grass is greener? You know what I'm saying? So, Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, 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 uh, yeah, I, I just walk away, you know, <laughs> I, 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 
don't want to do it. And I, <laughs> but I think that comes with like just the experience of like knowing like what to look out for, and Excuse also me. like having yeah. having just made mistakes in the past, or like realizing that like okay, all relationships are not worth salvaging. Yeah. Right, let it be, let it be. Right. Yeah, right. and then I just go get a pint of raspberry sorbet, <laughs> Netflix. Yeah, hey, look, now, yeah. 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 Look, cream. Oh, yeah. okay. kick back. Yeah. Just kick back, and be like, yeah. I'll get them next time. I you, you're gonna miss me. <laughs> you're gonna miss you're gonna me. Call me back you're one day. So speaking of that, then what's one of like your craziest stories? Just period. You've been in the industry for a minute, so I know you got a few. What is like uh, the, oh, the craziest thing that's ever happened Ooh. to you? Ever, 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 ever in your career? You don't gotta mention them. You don't gotta mention no names. Or you but want if to, you or want, or you can, 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 or you can mention the names after Whoa. the cameras right. go off. And we'll <laughs> talk about that. Blow it up. Because we know some people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, you good. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. Like, what? What is my 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 craziest? From tour, like being outside, it could be anything. Oh my goodness! What is the craziest? The craziest. Money. Right, just give me some. I know that it's, that it's hard for Ian because he's I know it's so been many up, crazy, up, yeah. so right. many crazy I stories. Know it. Like you know, and I, I keep going back to this one with with Shang and Twenty One Savage because we had created a great piece of work. The record was really hot. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the label didn't know. The label didn't do it. She was on an independent label. Mm-hmm. They didn't do their research, and they let the and and see. My whole thing was like when we were recording the record, Shang was like, "Well, do I need to be at the studio?" And I'm like, "Yeah, you need to be at the studio because I know he's gonna come in. And he's gonna, gonna see you, your, and your he's gonna wanna, ass, and he's gonna exactly. He's gonna wanna." Hey, hey, and and, that's and exactly. he's gonna drop performance fees for videos. He's gonna want to show up to shows, and yeah. that's exactly what he did. That's exactly <laughs> what the, a, a verse that could have been done in fifteen minutes. He stayed in that studio for forty five minutes. They made sure it was perfect. Twenty one, twenty one, and he and, and he was willing to do whatever she asked. Yeah. Like, you know, at the time she was like, she was staying with me. So like, I knew what was going on and like, he would be like hitting her like, yo, I'm outside. Like, where you at? And her label just didn't get it. They didn't, didn't they didn't get it. So when it was time to like do videos and do all of that shit, they were like not signing off on it because they didn't understand. And they would have, they, they would have seen such a return on that investment. If, if they had just like, like Ian said, did their research and just kind of like let us do what we knew what was the right thing to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I got, I got something and it's like, what we do is like our ex. And like right now it's like popping. Like, you know, people talk about their ex. So industry ex, like your ick, what it icks you. So what is <laughs> Ian's ex? <laughs> what do you hate? What's just like, g- uh, just just ick. grinds your gears, yeah. makes your skin crawl. I waiting. Oh yeah. I, having to 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 you do work and having to wait for other people to approve it mm-hmm. to to get it to the next level or, or just waiting period, mm-hmm. you know, doing what you do and, and you have people, uh, uh, that's supposed to be looking at the work that you're doing and it takes forever for them to, to get back. I hate, I just, I, you know, and I've been in the business long enough where it shouldn't bother me, right. but it still does. So you're, an, you, exe- you're an executor. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. A hundred percent. Do you think that that comes with like the fact that like everybody now is so like, I, I feel like there's no like real sense of urgency. No, yeah. Like Absolutely. everybody's just like, yeah, we'll get it done. Like, today, like yeah. oh, we'll do it. Like it's very like Oh yeah, and and that and that's part of it. It's like, you know, it's like, okay, my life is on the line. I got mm-hmm. I've invested in this situation and you say you're interested in it, but I'm not hearing anything. Mm-hmm. You know, and you, you it's it's a waste of time to call because you know in your spirit well, if they had any news or they were going to make any kind of moves, they would call you. Because all they're going to do is be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to try to get to it yeah. this week, next week. You know, I'll call you back. I'm on vacation. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But you just have to You have to be patient. You have to be vigilant. And you just have to wait. I, I'm just, again, I just hate the waiting game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'll probably always be like that. I'm ready to be in a position where I can, you know, finance my own situations and, and not have to depend 
on someone else as to whether or not, you know, and when you do call me. Yeah. No, I'm sure. <laughs> call me too. Okay. So okay, so Ian, what is what is next for Ian Burke? Like you've seen a lot of shit. You've been a part of a lot of shit. You started a lot of shit. What is the next chapter like for Ian Burke? I read some things. I've seen some things. I know that you are like dabbling in film. Yes. Okay. That's 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 it. It's film and television. You know, so my brother and I created this show called The Aquatics, a scripted show called The Aquatics about teenage scuba diving. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's, you know, it's a come of a age young adult type of series. You know what I'm saying about these young uh inadvertent superheroes of the ocean. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying and they they're going in and they're teaching while they're going through their daily struggles mm-hmm. as teenagers in high school. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's like the breakfast club in the ocean. Oh, wow. Okay. 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 So <laughs> that's that's one piece that we have out there chopping. It's, it's act, it actually got picked up for uh, the Sunscreen Film Festival. Oh, congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. We're like, woo, woo. Yeah. That means money. That means money. That means money. <laughs> so, uh, I'm really hoping, you know, we're doing that the screening there uh, at the end of this month, and I'm really excited about that. Oh, that's that. that's huge, Ian. Congratulations. So, and then I'm doing the, uh, I'm doing a, a docu, a mini series, a docu series, mm. rather, uh, on my early days in the music industry. The A, B to TLC. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Good. Is that what I saw the trailer for? <laughs> yes, ah, that's okay. good. I'm gonna steal that. Is that is that, 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 that what I saw the the trailer for the uh, like all the yeah. when I was at Icon? Mm-hmm. Okay, yep. dope. That's gonna be hot as fuck. Nice. It's so many crazy what? people. Like I just like I saw a clip of it on your website. You what was that? I, that I, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. What did y'all get you though? Huh? Ad. Development to the oh, girl, you're stuck on no, we got oh it. God. We got it, girl. <laughs> wow. Okay, last question. We got last it. question. Because I know a lot of people, parents, because you work with a lot of kids, right? Yeah, now I'm work, now I'm, yeah, now I'm working with kids. But no, um, you work with a lot of kids. So I have a lot of, I know a lot of people who have kids that want to like get their kids in the industry. Mm-hmm. What do you feel like parents should know when they're trying to How get the their money. children? How the money. Mm. How the money. It's expensive. It's expensive. Like you have to, you you need to put your kids in classes, mm-hmm. you know, and not just acting classes. You know, the it's the extracurricular activities that make your kids stand out. So if you if if you have a kid that's taking taekwondo, mm-hmm. that's that's doing boxing, that's doing archery, that's swimming, can do sign language. Uh, sign exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. If they if they the more they know, because these these are the things that makes them stand out in auditions. We've had to do auditions like you know the twins I manage, Gianni and Carlo. Mm-hmm. Um, they had to, it's a good thing the mother knew American Sign Language. One of the, they, one of the roles that they had to audition for, they had to know how to sign. Mm-hmm. And the mother had to teach them. But, you know, if you put your kids in that, make sure that they, they can speak multiple languages. First, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody just, oh, my kid looks good. Right. Uh, he can go he on right. TV. Right. Oh, he don't and have them kids, them kids yeah, be the ones that can't even smile on yeah, cue. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. As soon as you put a camera on them, they just like, freeze up. Shout out. <laughs> look, yeah, shout yeah, out to like, Peyton. <laughs> child, because that thing cannot, I'll be like, Listen, oh, my God. I know too many kids. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the thing. Like, you know, you have to be willing to invest. To invest in that. In the kids. Yeah. And, you know, like the Gianni and Car- Gianni and Carlo's mom. You know what I want. I don't like to to sit around and wait for for uh, producers to, or or casting agencies to to say yes. So mm-hmm. uh, I I created our own show called Sneakerheads, a YouTube show. Mm-hmm. So we're going out and exploring the sneaker culture, and we're, and I'm dropping it uh, on YouTube. You know what right. I'm saying to to help build their audience. Right. Um, you know and I was able to get uh, other influences involved in it uh, to help bring, you know, oh, life to the work yeah. that they're doing. So Ace, they might need to come look at your closet. Yeah. Right, because Ace got Ace, some sneakers. They come okay. shoot in my closet. Mama, Ace got yeah. some shit up no, in her yo, shit. No, no, for real. Like, yo, yo, we'll be up in there. You got two 10 year olds. I got the there. light and everything. Nah, but I mean, that's, what, that's literally what we do. We create content, so we know how important it is, like, industry-wise, like, entertainment is, like, creating the content. And it's important behind the scenes, in front of the scenes. Mm -hmm. Like, we're heavy on, like, 
just get the content. Like it does not have to be staged. It does not have to be professional. But like people got to just see get you. content. Yeah, because mm-hmm. there's no way you're gonna get anywhere. And they gotta feel the it. authenticity yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. it doesn't always have to be like I have another kid that I that I work with. Uh, her name is Kendall, and she's not into the arts at all. But what she is is the youngest certified farmer. In the state of Georgia, wow. at seven years old, I didn't expect you to say wow. farmer. Right? <laughs> I just wow. said like something else. Out there planting collard greens. Oh shit! Wow. Wow. I mean, it's not with Kendall. And all of that. Yeah, yeah. She, she got that's a couple news blasts, right? Yeah. That's yeah, crazy. Exactly. Yeah, she got a couple she's news on blasts. She's been mentioned on, on, uh, the, show, on um, the Ellen DeGeneres yeah, show. Yeah, she's on Ellen. Wow. Raphael Warnock talked about her, and she just got a call today, and I got a call from her mom. Said, you know, we gotta go see the vice president tomorrow. Oh, that's dope. Oh, that's and I think Dalton, Georgia or something. Oh like yeah, that. yeah, okay. And she has a she charisma wants to too. Meet, uh the uh oh yeah, she's yeah. a sweet girl. Yeah, she has charisma like crazy. That's dope. She yeah. wants to, the the vice president wants to meet her. Wow. So yes, invest Kendall. in your kids, D. Yeah. Right. That's the, I got dogs, but oh, yeah. Girl. <laughs> that's they what I'm saying. They're about to be they're about to be in the movies like <laughs> What are they going to do with that? Mozzie is not doing shit, okay? <laughs> Anyways. Um, so I think that wraps up our show. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, thank you for... There's so much more I want to talk about, yeah, but right, clearly so we're like, gem- 48 seconds right. left. <laughs> dropping <laughs> these gems. <laughs> like, honestly, like, I, this was so fulfilling for me. Like, it kind of feels like a full circle. Like, you know, of course, like, I know you, and I, I just think that... I just think it's so important that people know about your story and all that you've contributed and 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 provided and created and just the fact that you're continuing to like give back to younger creatives is is so important so well, thank you I, for I appreciate having that me. Work. I appreciate of course that. yes hopefully well, we can have you back <laughs> yeah. oh yeah yes. but you know what though tell people how they can find you they can find me oh i got 10 seconds <laughs> you can find me uh, at, on Instagram. That's the best way to reach out for me. Ian F. Burke. That's I-A-N-F Burke. And if you go to my page, you can hit the link and hit a 15-minute free consultation call with me. Free. 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 Look, I'm about to hit that link right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you trying to get, what you trying, you, you I need, need I need a manager. Oh, oh, girl. I'm bringing money in, Ian. Well, so you know, know. where the money? Because <laughs> if you ain't making the money, he I know said it's work now. Look, I'm right. good. Right. Anyway, we appreciate you, Ian. Thank that you wraps so up much, our Ian. episode and You're we welcome, are, bro. is out. Peace. Peace. Bye.